Shalom, Mishpaka. This is Diane Foster of Abiding in Yahweh Ministry. We recognize the words spoken by Yeshua, our Messiah, as found in John 5, 46, that the Bible, the entire Bible, speaks of him as he is Yahweh's word wrapped in flesh. This is a seventh-day Sabbath ministry, meaning we worship according to the commandment of Torah the fourth commandment, to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Continuing the series, The Promises of Yahweh, A to Z, A lift to Tom, this presentation focuses on the letter Y for yes. The letter Y has strong meaning for who our Yahweh is. Through Y, Abba himself teaches us what he will do and indeed, what he does for us. In this series, you will see that the letter Y connects to our Heavenly Father in a mighty way. Before we begin, I ask Yahweh for his blessing as a word is shared from his word. Abba, allow your Ruach to flow according to your will so that this presenter and each listener may receive your blessing. Please come and abide with us. And Father, I ask this blessing in the name of your precious Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. The Phoenicians, an early Semitic people from whom the Hebrews came, used the letter Y, which pictorially represent a nail. This is powerful enough in itself as a nail secures. As we just saw in the last presentation, Yahweh's sign or tal, the mark and covenant secured and connected us that we are his people and he is our most high Elohim. In terms of a nail, what immediately comes to our minds is Yeshua HaMashiach being nailed to the cross. This can also be seen metaphorically as Yahweh's new covenant being established as his son made the atonement for our sins, death. Through that nail, Yahweh removed the power and sting of sin, which is death. As spoken in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Christ Yeshua. When I began working on this presentation, I realized the complexity of this letter, why? Meaning, it can be used both as a vowel and consonant meaning it can be represented as O-U-V-W. In Hebrew, it can be for the conjunction such as an, or, or nor. This Y has been a cause and concern for the spelling and pronunciation of our LLM's name, along with the letters I and J. This debate will probably continue until Yahweh himself comes and clarifies it for us. I certainly have no desire to debate names and nomenclature here. I simply want to speak to the promises of our Yahweh, A to Z, Aleph to Tal. The letter Y pictorially is a nail in Paleo Hebrew, or I could say that. Uh, they don't necessarily use the Y, but that um, the, the symbol of the nail is a Y in Paleo-Hebrew. A nail connects things together. It binds. Yahweh's truth is binding. He says he will never forsake us, and this is our surety in him. This is his promise to those who follow him. What does this mean in terms of his faithfulness to his promises? Does our El Elohim say yes to his promises? 
Let's see what the scripture tells us. For all the promises of God Yahweh find their yes in Yeshua. This is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. That is in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. We have a powerful promise in that verse. Our Heavenly Father says yes to us. In Greek, we find the word yea as meaning yes. It is G34A3. It is spelled V A I and pronounced nay, meaning even so, yea, yes, truth, verily, surely. Most other versions use the word truth, which really tells it all because Yeshua is the way, the life, and the truth. On my video on truth, I go into detail showing the connectedness of truth and Yahweh and his son, Yeshua, his word wrapped in flesh, Emmet. It is amazing that looking at the letter Y as a nail sort of nails this truth down, doesn't it? But I decided to look at this word barely. And the first time Yeshua used this word barely or truth was when he established himself as the fulfillment of prophecies spoken of by Isaiah 53. You should read it. It's a very interesting chapter. And he says in Matthew 5, 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, the jot or the tittle is the smallest letter, I guess you could say, of the, uh, the Hebrew alphabet. You know, we have some um, letters of the alphabet that's written larger than others, some smaller than others, and he's saying not the smallest of the laws or what may seem to be the smallest of the laws shall in no way pass from the law till all be fulfilled. It's like he's saying, I'm telling you that no law, nothing that Yahweh declared will go undone. And this is a promise. He says yes as a promise that his followers shall and will sit with him. His beloved apostle John has Joshua using it twice, as in verily, verily. John 8 and 51, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. He says, yes, I promise that if we keep his commandments, the promise is life everlasting. He says it again in John 5, 40, uh, John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on me, him that sent me, has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, I use these three simple ones to iterate first that what Yahweh said from the beginning still stands today. And second, that the main iteration is to keep his commandments and follow him. For he said, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Yahshua gave us more truths that equate to yes. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 16. In Psalms 32, 8, Yah himself speaks to King David when he said, I will, this is a yes and a truth, instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. 
Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your Abiya. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now, these are so beautiful because, you know, and I don't really want to go into all of the situations that um, is going on in the world today. We all see it on the news, you know, um, with the tribulations, you know, the, the pestilences and the diseases and the hurricanes and the tornadoes and the bad, you know, all of these things. But what's most important is that we remember that Yeshua is the way and he is the truth and he is life. And if we believe on him and Yahweh who sent him, then we too have this everlasting life. He says that he will instruct us and teach us in the way that we should go. Sometimes we don't know, but if we listen to him, he tells us that he will teach us these things. And he also says that he will counsel us with an eye upon us. In other words, he's given us counsel, full attention, through his full attention, through his love. He's putting his all in all in us because he says with my eye upon you i will counsel you that's great and that's mighty and he says in isaiah 41 and 10 fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your abia i will strengthen you i will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are mighty promises. And these are the yes of our Yahweh. He gives us his yes for peace. And this is a surety. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. But let your hearts, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For he is the bearer of peace. He gave us peace, not as the world gives. This is a deep peace, Mishpaka that with all of the turmoil going on is sometimes it's just hard to find that place of peace but that place of peace that is a surety is peace in our yeshua hamashiach he gives us rest Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Notice he used the word yoke and he uses the word burden, which means that labor is there now, walking this way can sometimes be laborers for the trials and the, the temptations as we are in the world but not of the world as we live under the yoke of babylon and under the burdens of trying not to be of babylon we are told and he tells us right here in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. As we cling to him and be led by him rather than being led by Babylon. 
And when he told us this, we should know that he has given us faith to say yes to him, to go on to him, and to take his yoke and to learn of him. For in John 3, 16, he says, For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that he, uh, but that the world through him might be saved. So he wants to save us. All he asks is that we believe in him and believe in his father. For his father gave him Yeshua to us that we may learn of the father and have everlasting life. And we have this promise of Yahweh. Has his loving kindness ceased forever? Has his promise come to an end forever? As seen in Psalm 77, 8. No, for in Matthew 28, 20, he affirms to us, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Oh, he's with us. His loving kindness has not ceased and neither has his promises so let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful for we have need of endurance so that when we have done the will of yahweh we may receive what was promised we find that in Hebrews 10, 36. So yes, it speaks of endurance. To continue to run the race that has been set before us. So that when we are done, and when we have done the will of Yahweh, we may receive what was promised. And what was promised was everlasting life to be with him in his kingdom in the new Jerusalem. We have to stay with him, family. We have to stay with him. We have to take his yoke and learn of him. We have to endure. We must endure until the end. Indeed, Mishpaka, I pray for endurance to finish this race on a daily basis. I must breathe in his promise because it is Yahweh who establishes us in Yeshua and has anointed us and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. That's powerful. Because our Abiyya establishes us as we walk in his son, his word wrapped in flesh. Abiyya has anointed us he has also put his seal on us. Now that's mighty. He's put his mark on us. He's established his covenant in us. And he gave us his spirit in our hearts. And what is his spirit? That's the comforter. The spirit of Yahweh. The spirit of Yeshua. And the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, in our hearts, as a guarantee that if we 
allow these things to be, we will be able to endure. Our Heavenly Father says yes to us. So let us say yes to our Heavenly Father, Abiyah, as he has said yes to us, to establish us that he may show his strength in us as his truth abides in us and he makes us his disciples. Well, I hope this presentation has uplifted you in some way. Thank each of you for listening. I have received many blessings and trials during this time, almost a year now of making this series, The Promises of Yahweh, A to Z, A lift to Tom. Your comments have been very encouraging. And believe me when I say they have given me strength to continue on in this series. Be blessed, each of you. Let us pray for one another, calling one another's name out to Yahweh as we lift one another up before him. Toda and Shalom.